Governor Samuel Otam of Benue State has threatened to drag the federal government to court if President Muhammad Buhari's administration insists on implementing its grazing routes and reserves policy. The governor said the Land Use Act was explicit on the issue of land ownership and the management in the country. He stressed that any attempt to subvert his right as a governor through the creation of a non-existent cattle route and reserves would be challenged in court. He called on lieutenants to the, uh, of Mr. President to advise him properly on issues so that things would work better for the country, pointing out that insisting on cattle routes in the 21st century when states had resorted to enacting laws was retrogressive. Well, joining us to discuss this is Michael Gusa. He's the um, state attorney general in Benway State and, of course, is the Justice Commissioner, okay, and we're being joined by Ladipo Johnson, who is also a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. I hope that Mr. Guza can hear us. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I watched the clip uh, of the Benue State Governor talking this early this morning on another TV station, um, and he was very explicit as to you know his demands and and what he thought of Mr. President. Um, but when he, a governor says he's going to take the federal government to courts, one would wonder if, you know, he has any legal backing whatsoever. Um, I believe he does. Um, and it is a smart thing to do in the present circumstances. Because it seems that the um, federal government under this precedent is um, hell-bent on either first was Ruga, and ranching, and now you understand he's looking at the um, so-called existing grazing routes. Um, whichever way, the, the best, I think, um, and the smartest step the governor could take is to go to court to determine um, whether the um, law that existed before independence, whether it was subsumed under the um, uh, constitution and um, whether the, the, the rights, the, to look at the competing rights of the pastoralists with the farmers and um, those who actually own the land. Mm -hmm. These are things that have to be looked at. It is not so simplistic. The, the federal government cannot just um, do what it seems to want to do. Um, and then when you take everything in a holistic manner, the way the country is at the moment, the tensions, and what have you, is best, instead of making it a political battle, is best to look at the legal, from, legal the, from the legal perspective. Why do you think, before I go to the Attorney General of Benway State, why do you think that the federal government is so, in your words, hell-bent to recreate uh, these grazing routes? Uh, why is, do you think so? I, I, there's, I mean, there's no reason to hide it. Um, since we've had clashes between um, farmers and um, the nomads or the pastoralists, the government has always spoken and come down on the side of the herdsmen, of the pastoralists. So I think the government is trying to say that, okay, let's see how they can sustain and keep their lifestyle, which is grazing and going from area to area. That's what they're looking at. They're but states looking. have outrightly banned, especially South exactly. states. Exactly. That's why we say. This. That's why we say that um, let it go to the courts. Let the courts determine. Can you stop someone from moving around in a federation? That's one question. Two, a person moving around, grazing, going on other people's lands, is it legal? So there are issues that have to be determined, and I think Governor Autumn has it right. And mm -hmm. since his attorney general is on, he can tell us, I think they should go to court. Mr. Gusa, it's good to have you join us. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in knowing, because I'm guessing that you will be filing this suit uh, on behalf of the Benue State government. But my, my question, just as I asked him, because I listened to your principal this morning um, on TV, and he, he spoke very, he, was, he sounded very certain that um, the president obviously has an agenda of sort, and that's why he is bent on going ahead with this grazing route. But um, why do you think that your governor 
is holding this position and, and what exactly has pushed you uh, and your principal to take this position of going to court and taking the federal government to court? Well, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you very much for having me in this evening. Uh, I want to say that I am 100% uh, in support of what His Excellency, the Governor of Benue State, has said, just like uh, you've narrated. Uh, His Excellency, the Governor Samuel Otom, is one man that believes in the rule of law uh, and due process. And so when he came uh, as Governor of Benue State in 2015, he met these killings upon killings in Benue State by the headers. And so he now thought of what uh, would be done to bring a check and so that his people will now live in peace. He sponsored uh, this bill, uh, which has been signed into law now, uh, ranches, open grazing uh, prohibition and ranches establishment law. And when uh, it went to the Benue State House of Assembly, a public hearing was conducted all the major stakeholders uh, who felt concerned came and uh, gave their inputs as to what they would want this law to be. At the end of the day, His Excellency the Governor assented to uh, this law. Even though that was assented to in May 2017, he still gave a period of time because it was a new law so that everybody that was concerned can adopt to uh, the, 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 the new law. This was aimed at bringing peace in Benue State. And I want to say that you, you know uh, that by virtue of the provisions of the Land Use Act, the land is vested in the governor of the state who holds it in trust for the people of the state. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have this law in place, when they brought the issue of Ruga uh, some uh, two years back, we went to court and the court De declared the process that was initiated by the federal government as a nullity, and that the land is owned by the Benue State Governor, who holds it in trust for the people of the state. And so, federal government cannot now come and impose a decision to come and establish Ruga in the state. So that uh, has gone. They have not even appeared against that decision. And mm -hmm. so that is the position that we have in Benue State. So what am I saying in essence? We have a law here that forbids open grazing in, in, in the state. We have a law here that has repealed uh, the, 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 the law that created grazing reserves in the state. And so and together with all the instruments that were made therein. And so for the, the federal government to now come and say they will, they will come and acquire land in Benue State to give it to these headers who have been killing our people, who have made our people to be in IDP camps for the past six or seven years, which is a private business. I think that is totally unacceptable, and we are not going to accept that. The entire people of Benue State are not going to accept that. We are going to resist that move, and the only way we can do is by going to court to seek redress against the injustice that the federal government wants to come and establish uh, these reserves in Benue State. But if, a federal, if the federal government is insistent on this and, they, and the go president had given the uh, attorney general of the federation a go-ahead to take a look at these grazing routes, um, do you not think that maybe the presidency has done some feasibility studies and they have come to a conclusion that that might be a wholesome way to attack this issue of banditry? Well, uh, the, the whole world we hear if uh, it is within the powers of the president to take ancestral uh, lands that belong to the people of Benue State and give to his kinsmen, who are the Fulanese, who are coming in from Fuda Jalon and all over the place, all over Africa, oh, to come and take this land and give them, the, the whole world will hear. And that is why his excellency I'm sorry, the Mr. Gusha, insisted that I'm so sorry we to go talk to over you. I'm so sorry to talk over you. So you believe that the president is doing this in the interest of his people, who you call the Fulanese or the Normans. This is what you think. What else? What, what else? You know that livestock business in, in Nigeria is, uh, is private business. They are doing it as a business. They are doing it as their private business. And here in Benue State, we are crop farmers. We have our farms. We are farming on our land. And then you now want to come and take over this land and give it to another tribe. That is totally unacceptable. Interesting. I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Johnson, because the Attorney General seems to be clear on their stance as to what they want. 
But looking at it wholesomely, and I, I, the same question I asked, do you think maybe the federal government thinks that their plan would work? Because they have, in Benue State, repealed a law, and they have also put an, another law in place that bans open grazing, and they gave ample time, according to him, for people to adjust. But it seemed to have not solved the situation. So maybe, could this plan by the president, yeah, I'm just asking, the look on your face <laughs> it, it says it, but... No, could it be that maybe it would be a wholesome way to deal with the situation? Uh, could from, it? from the presidency's point of view, yes. They're trying to look for a way to ensure that grazing still takes place in one form or the other. Um, and that's why they said, um, let's look at the 368 um, grazing reserves that were there sometime, God knows how many years ago. And let's look at and what them. about those ones that have yeah. been built upon? What if a refinery is not built on exactly. that? Exactly. What if you we now have, have train to, tracks? And on that, those that is exactly why I said that they'll be tied up in court for quite a long time. Because even if you are allowed to do it, then each one will be determined on its merits. The particular land in issue, as an example, is it, as the Attorney General says, ancestral land? Is it family land? Um, was it established? The fact that you grazed over the land, you understand, you come in, go out and whatever, does not mean it is yours. Doesn't grant you an easement over the land. You may have been trespassing. Now the fact that they didn't um, uh, prosecute you for trespassing at that time, doesn't mean they can't do that now. So there are many things that will be taken into um, account. And that's why I said what the governor of Benway State has said is a step in the right direction. It will sort the problem out. It would take quite a while, but it would sort the problem out. Now, unfortunately, this is not the time where, when the presidency should be insistent on such a thing. So, the, the, so, so the, you're saying it makes him culpable. It makes it seem like no, he has it, a hand in no, look, the unrest. That's, it's not or that it makes it, him... Or, or <laughs> he, he, are you saying that he's giving these so-called bandits he's, or he's herders given, the upper hand? He's giving the impression the average citizen will look at it. It's not politics. It's the impression that the presidency has given that they are backing the um, herdsmen or the pastoralists, whatever you want to call them, they're backing them. Because first they tried um, with the Ruga, they've tried several things, you know? So people keep looking at it and saying, oh, you just keep coming back with this thing. You understand? So unfortunately for him, I believe that is the view of um, majority of Nigerians. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Gusau, my, my, my last question is to you. Before now, before we started having these clashes, we've always had these nomads amongst us. They've believed with us. They've um, grazed, you know, for years. Uh, at what point did it become a problem? Because now this is, a, yes, we know that guns have been introduced into the equation, and so it changes everything. And people are being killed on their farmlands and buried in shallow graves. But whatever happened, where did it go wrong that at this point... Uh, even the farmers in Benue State are saying we, we're standing behind the governor and we do not want to give our lands to, to be grazed on. Um, again, it's a two-pronged question. Mr. President does have his own, some form of rant when he goes home every time he goes for uh, a holiday in his hometown. We see his ranch. Uh, so it, it really makes me wonder why ranching is not in the cards for Mr. President. Well, that is the problem uh, that we also have here in Benue State. Uh, because the, the headers that we used to know uh, will come with their cattle and then the, the highest thing they will carry or they will be carrying will be their sticks uh, to control the cattle. But now, the headsmen that you are seeing, you are seeing them with AK-47. And sometimes you don't even see them with livestock. You don't even see them with cattle. And so their agenda now is different from what uh, was obtainable uh, long before now. Now they are coming with an agenda. They are coming to take over this land. They are coming to kill our people so that they can now uh, take over their land and settle here. And we are saying that no, 
the, 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 the headers How that we used to, to know. Conclusion? Have you had a conversation? They, they, they have you had a conversation with any of these people for them to tell you? Because I'm trying to understand where you got this conclusion from that they want to take over your land, kill your people, and take over your land. How is so, that even possible? Well, well, what is happening here in Benue State? Most of the places that they have sacked these communities from their ancestral homes, if you go there now, they have destroyed their graves, they have cut down their economic trees, they have destroyed their houses, and they are settled on, on those lands now, as I talk to you. Interesting. And what's the government doing about it? Well, that is why you hear, we keep hearing our governor complain. Come to Benue State, you see more than 2 million people who are living in RDP camps. They have been ransacked from their ancestral homes. And you know that the state alone uh, has uh, limited powers. All this while, His Excellency the Governor has been managing even to sustain these IDPs in these IDP camps. It has not been easy. And I want to tell you that since this has happened, the federal government has never intervened by way of saying that, let us see how we can provide security for these people to go back to their ancestral homes and con uh, continue with their farming activities. Federal government has not come to Benue State to say that, look, these people have been in IDP camps, and this is what we are supporting. The, the 10 billion that the, 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 the vice president came and promised uh, the people of Benue State when he visited up to today, we are not seeing a penny from that money that he came and promised. Well, so um, I don't need a soothsayer to tell me that they want to take over this land. Wow. Well, Michael Gusa is the Benway State Attorney General and uh, Ladipo Johnson is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Hopefully we will sometime uh, in the future have the governor on this show to ex uh, tell us extensively what exactly is going on in Benway State. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, I will be saying goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed all our conversations tonight. We'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics as we tackle other political issues. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Do have a good evening.